You win this battle, man, I'll soon be dead I'll glue your face to my dick so I can fuck with your head I got metaphors coming through my pores You've probably never been in a battle before So, hope you realize your mistake There ain't no party cats or candles, this won't be a piece of cake Folks, welcome to the Before Hours Podcast An internet radio phenomenon hosted by an occasional morning person I ask the most interesting people I know about their sleep, their routine, life, love, stress, setbacks And whatever else comes to mind If you want to talk to us, you could email us at the before hours podcast at gmail.com or you could slide into my dms on instagram i'm at bobby sheen lol but for now good friend hilarious stand-up comedian and i'm gonna go ahead and say it possibly a new podcast co-host sean barry what's going on sean hi bobby hi so yeah, like him, dude. yeah that other word you said yeah. yeah i agree with that i appreciate all that i appreciate that intro very 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 professional i, I, I try to be as professional as possible yeah so what do you want to talk about I don't know. You said you texted me. I do a podcast, and they gave me no. So we're just two white guys talking. Two white guys so talking. Just every every podcast, at least, yeah. No interview questions for me. Because you said good friend, but I think the the real answer question, real thing to say is new friend. We are new friends. We are very new friends. Yeah, and it's actually it's been pretty delightful. I've enjoyed it. Yeah, mm -hmm. until you hurt me that one time. But until I really hurt he you, he ruined it. We had plans to hang out, and then he said, "Sorry, I can't. I gotta get." Dome. I gotta get domed. I gotta get domed. You today. know why I said that? Because I have a date sounds gay to me. That's wrong. It's <laughs> not that's, that's that's a completely fine thing to say. I respect that. I'd still be upset, but you know, mm -hmm. you know. By the way, to be clear to the listeners, I had agreed to the date first. Then I agreed to the bro hang. I do abide by bros before hoes, mm -hmm. but I also abide by you don't cancel plans. You so it wasn't I wasn't canceling a plan what, with you. What you should have done is brought the date also <laughs> to the stand and run back and forth between the two of us, a la 90 sitcom style. Ooh. That's more fun. That's a better and way to with, live. With with the girl, I she thinks that I have a mustache, but you guys don't know that I wear a fake mustache. Yeah, so exactly. I'm wearing the fake mustache. And then one time her. you come back with the mustache and I was like, where'd you get the mustache? Yeah, dude, this is the new pilot. Yeah, that, that's a good show. I'd watch it. Mm -hmm. The Misadventures of Bobby Shyham. Shyham. He, he changed the name slightly. A little bit. On most of those shows, you know? Shylock. Like, like, I don't think it's Ray Romano on Everybody Loves Raymond. It's like Ray something else. Amano. Barone. Ray Barone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a slight change. It's a different like, guy. He, he's a different guy. But. Or Tracy Jordan and Tracy Morgan. And yeah. I'm, I'm never quite sure which one is which. Charlie Sheen and Charlie whatever he was on Two and a Half Men. Uh-huh. Uh, there's more. Yeah, yeah, but so we should say, Sean, our mutual friend is uh, Andrew Steiner, who's also been on the podcast. Yes, Andrew Steiner, my very good friend. He's a good friend of mine for now. He for now. I mean, at any point, if I have to cut someone out to make it in show business, mm -hmm. I'll do so. Yeah, this is something you should know about me now. Oh no, no, trust me, I am. I've said this before. I will get a whole new set of friends when I'm famous. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm not. I'm loyal to no one except myself. Mm -hmm. That's how uh, you gotta keep stepping on the people you love most to get to the top. Yeah, I'll do anything yeah. to be famous. Yeah. Anything. Anything. I'll do anything. Anything. Problem is, you don't have the opportunities to do anything anymore. You just have to be successful now. You can't just blow guys anymore. Yeah. God, that must have been fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. When it was just like, if you're willing and participant and you're just like, oh, five dicks need being sucked. That's nice. I would uh, not to invalidate the experience of anybody else, but I would fucking eat a horrendous woman's pussy for spots on stage. Yeah, for sure. See, I don't think that's as, that bad. <laughs> horrendous woman's pussy. What's a horrendous pussy to you? Uh, a horrendous. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, name names too. Name names. Yeah. I wanna, um. I wanna know whose vagina you think is unkept. No, I, you know, I think most vaginas are fine. It's the person attached to them that can mm. make you be mm. like, oh, mm. oh, God. I remember I went on a date one time and the, ener the energy of this woman was, um, I think, the most masculine energy I've ever felt from mm. a person, man or woman. Okay. And it wasn't it wasn't like tomboy. Like I think tomboy's cute. I think tomboy's sexy. Yeah. Like if she's yeah. kind of like fit and she's like, and I like playing sports, I'm like, well, that's very cool. I mean, yeah. Who you know, I'm not opposed to being tossed around every once in a while. Well, yeah, because you're a little guy. But uh, I'm a little oh, guy. Well, I've never thrown you. That'll be fun when we get to that <laughs> stage of our relationship. I've thrown Andrew before because he's also little. Yeah. So I'm very strong. Mm -hmm. People aren't gonna look at this and assume I'm just fat. It's mainly muscle. Mm -hmm. You used to play football. Yes. Played mm -hmm. D3 football uh Ithaca College. And then uh I did not go pro like I thought I would. And uh now I picked comedy. So division three. Yeah. Guy that doesn't know anything about yeah. football. Is that the best one? No, that's the third best one. Actually, it's really the second best one because all right, the best players go play D1 football. 
Uh, you know, that's your biggest like state schools like Alabama, Georgia, USC, all those like them. And then there's D2, which is usually used like for guys who like either like are like not good enough for D1 or like they just like went to a smaller school or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then D3 are guys who are very good in college, but just don't have the intangible. They were very good in high school, but don't have the intangibles to go like D1. Like, so like straight up, I was like pretty heavily recruited uh, when I was like a freshman and sophomore in high school to play like college ball. And uh, then I hit like 16 and I just stopped growing. Because I'm like, I'm about, I'm 5'11 and three quarters, which drives me insane. I didn't hit that six mark, but Mm -hmm. that's uh, how you know he's an honest man, folks. I know. That's why I wear boots. So I am six foot to most people. And I'm wearing boots because it's raining today. Yeah. That's also the rain. Uh, And then I stopped growing and I was bummed because like all my cousins are like about six, three, six, four. And if I was six, three, six, four, I probably would have gone D1. Mm -hmm. And then maybe the NFL. So it was good. Inside hand movement. I was good at it. And then, uh, then I was like, oh, well, let's try to be funny then. Yeah. Yeah. I think that a lot of comics are the first thing that didn't work out. Yeah. But I I still need people to look at me. Yeah. You that's fair. I mean? Yeah. I, prefer, I prefer those people that the first thing to work out and they went to comedy. It's mm-hmm. like the second thing. I hate people that are like only comedy. You know, it's like that's the only thing they've ever cared about. Like that. I don't I don't like that. I don't like their com- comedic stylings. And I don't usually don't like them as people. Mm-hmm. So they find them very kind of flat. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's uh, for every like, you know, because people are like Chappelle started when he was 15. And I'm like, okay, but for every like Chappelle, there's like a bunch of theater kids. Yeah, it's mainly theater kids. (laughs) Well, and to be fair, Chappelle was a theater kid as well. Yeah, literally went to theater school, middle class upbringing. But he's a black guy that says the N word. So people don't know that. Yeah, he hides the the fact that he's a theater kid that just wants to sing and dance. Yeah, (laughs) I mean, like, I think, God, do you do you still love Chappelle? Uh, he's fine. I uh, here's the thing. I think he's very funny. Mm-hmm. I do not think he's profound. No, that's where he I gets think, tripped. Up. I think this is that's the worst part about his comeback the last mm-hmm. six years or so is that like he 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 used to be able to touch on a little bit of profoundness early on, mm-hmm. and then he really leaned on. I guess if you were saying anything fucking deep anymore. And mm-hmm. Now it's because now his deep is like it's hard being black in America, and it's like. Yes, it is, Dave. Yes, yeah. I, th- I think so. Not as hard as I think he thinks it is, but I'm I'm willing to uh, hear that perspective. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. A good perspective, but like, yeah, it's just that. And then, like, I don't know. The last like three specials have just been him basically repeating himself. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I just find that lame as a comic, where it's just like, I mean, the last special I thought was just straight bad. Mm, like, I, I haven't like, watched. I haven't watched the last. So, one. I forgot what it's called, but the one that came out in like I think January, December. Okay. He opens with the Jim Carrey joke, and I'm like, this is. It sucks. He opens with a Jim Carrey joke. Well, no, he uses like talking about you know when Jim Carrey played Andy Kaufman on in the movie. He sets it up to then make trans jokes. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like uh, a fourth special straight about trans people, huh? Trans jokes. I'm on board, but then you can't you can't you can't tell like a like a silly trans joke and then be like sitting on the stool and be like. Here's why freedom of speech is so important. Yeah, that's, you know that, I mean? that's, that's then it's not fun anymore. It's just like that's why I like J- Shane Gillis because Shane Gillis will say something fucked up and then be like, "Comedy, you know." Well, I, I know that, that's, that's, that's really yeah. Mark Norman. I know, but you know, like it's it's like, hey, just being a silly Shane goose. Gillis, I've, never, I've never heard him say anything that fucked up, honestly. Yeah, it's not like he's ever taken. Mm-hmm. It's more just like he's a goofball. Mm-hmm. Like, that's really it's, it's just that he uses pejo- uh, pejorative words. That people yeah. don't like and then they're like oh that means but it's like it's really not it's more of just him using them as shorthand as if he was we were all still 15 you know and he had he does have jock energy yeah former jock you're former jock yeah i was talking to some of the we are very similar except he's very talented <laughs> <laughs> like that's the only really the only difference is that he was also he also played football he was also recruited to west point i think mm-hmm. he actually he went to west point uh for like a day or something mm-hmm. and then he dropped out and then uh He's he's funny. You were recruited by West Point. Yeah, they wanted me to play football for him. And then they saw my grades, and they're like, "Oh, oh, okay." So and my well, grades, I had a, like an eighty-eight average in high school, solid B plus. Is that be- okay? Yeah, like they want you to be like in the nineties. Oh, which is the best of the best, dude. The best of the best. Because mm-hmm. they're the strong, best. and then yeah. there's army strong. Exactly. So walk me through, because <laughs> mm-hmm. you started playing football. How old were you when you started? Uh, I was twelve. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And you were a big boy. Big boy. Were you pushed into it by your parents? No, really. My mom did not want me playing at all. Yeah. It was when I was like, I want to fucking play football rules, dude. And then, uh, you know, I was actually fucking terrible my first like year and a half. And then I had a growth spurt and a muscle spurt. Mm -hmm. And then I was just like, I'm just pushing fucking fools around. This is fucking sick. 
And then uh, I was like the only, I like, I took it all seriously. You know, like when the coach comes in and tells you, he's like, you got hit. Yeah. Yeah. Focus on football. Don't worry about hanging out with your friends. You gotta go to the weight room. You gotta be studying things. And I actually took it seriously. Mm -hmm. And then my, my, then I came to like training camp next year when I was entering high school and I was like, I'll play JV and I'll hopefully get recruited. And then they immediately recruited me to varsity because I was the only one in the entire school who was going to the weight room and actually getting in shape and putting on. I, I generally put on about 35 pounds of muscle. Wow. In like a summer. Holy so I was shit. just fucking just getting. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, dude. It was fucking great for a minute. And you, then, get, you get like the you get like the newbie gains, but like the mid puberty. Yeah, no, it's literally just gains. like puberty, like newbie gains and all just hit at once. And I was just like, just, I basically just did like idiot lifting. It was just squats and bench press and deadlifting. And that's mm -hmm. all I would do. Mm -hmm. And I was throwing up like real weight. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. And then, and then it resulted in nothing because my school, like, it was like one of those things like, I, as an, you can't have the best player being an offensive lineman. Yeah. Why on a fo fucking football <laughs> team? It's like, oh, there's a hole, but the fucking guy can't run through it because he sucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't worry. The quarterback has all day to throw, but his arms shit and our receivers can't catch. So I guess we'll lose every game by 40. So where'd you grow up, Sean? I grew up uh, in uh, Cortland Manor, New York, uh, which is like northern Westchester near Peekskill. Oh, OK. From, yeah. It's, We're both upstate boys. Yeah. Where are you from? Uh, Orange County. So. OK. Yeah. Little you're, yeah you're, you're more aware in Orange County. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what town? Well, I'm from the town of Green Lake. I don't know if you know. I don't know. It's, it's part so. of Warwick. OK. Oh, OK. I know Warwick. Yeah. yeah OK. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were pretty close to each other. So you, you get you get the Hudson Valley vibe. Yeah. You know, fucking. I don't know. It's Suburban, but I say coffee weird. That whole thing. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, it's just like, especially when you guys it starts getting a little more north and it starts becoming like a country town. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like my town was so weird, but it was like divided. It was Cortland Manor. It's like four villages put together. It's the courts, the manor, Montrose, Buchanan, and Verplank. And the manor is all like parents work in the city. Uh, you know, commuting in pretty well to do upper middle class. Montrose is like true middle class, a little blue collar. Some people have like some white collar jobs. And then Buchanan or Plank is just like Kentucky. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's the last known sighting of the Ku Klux Klan in the no in the northern uh, side of America. Jeez. Birthplace of Mel Gibson. Okay. A lot uh of racial uh, <laughs> not goodness. <laughs> Not goodness. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Racial. Uh, no, racial not goodness. Racial not goodness. Yeah, <laughs> going on there. Yeah. And again, I don't mean to point fingers, but it's predominantly Italian Americans who are uh, driving about the racial ungoodness. In I our mean, country. Italians are fucking racist. And yeah. I, I'm aware of how ironic that statement is, but I stand by it. No, they, they really they, like Italians are the Ku Klux Klan of North of, <laughs> of New York, New Jersey and, and Connecticut. Like It's hard to explain, but it's just so true. It's anti-Italian sentiment over here. People who watch The Sopranos and then don't get the satire yeah, of yeah. it. And they're like, Tony Soprano is a good guy. Yeah. He's just doing things for his family by killing all these guys. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, that that uh, uh, dumb guy not understanding the anti-hero. Yeah. It's such a fucking Oh, it's so it's so, there's all those anti-hero shows mm -hmm. like in the golden age of TV, which is when we were like growing up. It's mm -hmm. like people are like break Walter White fucking why is Skyler such a bitch to yeah, him? Yeah, yeah. Why? Because he's never home for his newborn child. Yeah. He's just out selling meth. Mm -hmm. I've already watched it like as adult because I was a little bit of that. It's like, dude, Walter and Jesse rule, dude. Let's just sell some fucking drugs. Yeah, yeah. And you yeah. watch it as an adult. It's like, dude, fucking stop lying to your wife. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, what are you doing? Dude, fucking um it's so early on in that show. Spoiler alert for uh for it's, Breaking it's, Bad. It's 15 years old. It's 15 years old, so you should have watched it by now. But if you haven't watched it, please pause this podcast and watch yeah. the whole thing. But uh early, early in the dude, my, the bottom, thank you so much. For those just <laughs> listening, the bottom of my foot itches so fucking bad. Oh, you were untied. I thought you were retying your shoe. That's no. why. I'm, oh, so you're gonna do this right now. you I have to, dude. It was uh, driving right. me crazy. I'll give those scratches. Uh, don't, please don't do that. You want me to tickle your feet? Want me to tickle your feet? This is turning into a very different podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's what my, more profitable when that's what's certain <laughs> dude we could we could lean into this right now i'll just tickle your feet every episode i'll make some money we should make a tiktok of me tickling your feet that'll mm. go more viral than any <laughs> joke we've write, fucking write in a million years it would it, well it would certainly have more subscribers yeah dude yeah well um i'm gonna don't all right, right now 50 50 on the case we do it 50 50, 50 50 money wise watch feet ticklers uh, tick. podcast yeah. coming out this month or we'll but. call it teat ficklers Ooh. Mm -hmm. okay try to try to fool the algorithm yeah a little bit yeah mm -hmm. so then we don't get suppressed uh but yeah early on in the in the breaking bad universe like it's very clear uh that walt 
isn't doing it for his family because his former business partner is like, I will pay. Yeah, it's like for, episode like three. Yeah. So it's like if you're a fucking adult, if you don't get it, it's about something else. Yeah. And then they really spell it out for you at the end where he's like, I did it for me. Yeah. You know, you literally have to hammer it home for the people that did like, mm-hmm. oh, he's a bad guy <laughs> at the end. But like, you still kind of like him. Yeah. Dude, whenever anybody like I find out that someone's a Breaking Bad fan, I always ask yeah. them the same question because yeah. I think the, the answer is always fascinating. Yeah. So I'll, I'll ask it to you. At what point did you stop rooting for Walt? Uh, oh, fuck. That's a good one because I was like a little immature in the sense I was like, he's the main character. I have to root yeah, yeah. for him a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's around. I forgot the episode, but it's like season four when they like it's the like the, which is the best season by far. Uh, it's just like it's not the, before he poisons the kid. It's just like the way it's the fight he has with Jesse when like it was Jesse started to turn with a go to Gus. That's where I'm like, fuck Walt, dude. Let's just kill him and have a successful business. Yeah, especially because I'm actually getting to the point now where I like Better Call Saul more than Breaking Bad. Ooh. That's become like a hot take of mine, and I'm like, dude. This guy ruined a very profitable business that ma- really made a lot of people happy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was just like, this is his own ego. It's like, this is a well-run business. Everyone was getting paid on time. Taxes were getting paid. Everyone was, until this one fucking asshole ruined the whole thing. Mm-hmm. God, what a dick. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that was probably right then. I know a lot of people were like when Jane dies, but you know, I don't know. You could, she would have AOD that anyways. <laughs> I don't know. What about you? What about where'd you turn? For me, it's it's actually not when he lets Jane die. Mm-hmm. Uh, but because even even him letting Jane die served a purpose. Yeah. Because she was sort of corrupted in Walt's mind, corrupting Jesse in a way that was gonna fuck with his bag. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? But um fucking street Bobby talking about the bag. <laughs> yeah. Uh fucking how cringe is that? But um even that I'm like, okay, from a Machiavellian perspective, I get it. It's not nice, mm-hmm. but it's not it's not a hundred percent um just sadism. Yeah. But that moment where uh like Jesse turns on Walt and Walt uh has him like uh I guess detained by whoever was in charge at the time and he goes up to Jesse. Walt goes up to Jesse and goes, I watched Jane die. Oh. I'm like, oh, you're a lunatic. Yeah, that's uh, that's like the peak of the sh- that's literally the, that's Ozzy Mandy. That's mm-hmm. that's that's the that's that is the best show, episode of television in history, in yeah. my opinion. That's just genuinely is. It's like fucking Hank's killed, the entire system comes crumbling down. Mm-hmm. He's stealing his own child, trying to escape with his eight eighty mil eighteen million dollars or whatever he mm-hmm. has. And you're like, fuck, dude. Yeah. He's a full sociopath, murdering lunatic who will kill anybody. And to me, the point of this show yeah. is that he was always like that. Yeah. Because in the pilot, what's interesting is I watched I like came in during like the second season and yeah. then rewatch the first season. So I watched the pilot with some information about who he was be, going to become. And when you watch it that way, it's interesting because you could see he's resentful. Yeah. In a way, I mean, his life didn't turn out exactly like he wanted it to. Yeah, he's, the, uh, he's, he's the average suburban man mm-hmm. who's middling in life. He feels like he deserved more. He feels like he earned more. Mm-hmm. He should have earned more, but he, he can't be content with his simple life. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, so basically he puts on, the, he put on the, like, that's why I like Better Call Saul of both is like, Walt puts on the mask of Walter White when he really is Heisenberg. Yeah. But like. But Saul Goodman is put on the mask to hide the fact that he's scared Jimmy McGill. Like he doesn't get he he he's pretending to be bad and Walter's pretending to be good. Oh wow! Yeah, that's what I love the parallels about that show. Have you finished Better Call Saul? Yeah, dude, phenomenal. guys, phenomenal. You gotta watch it. You gotta. It's, watch I feel like Saul. a lot of people like were like when it first came out it was big, it was the first, and then they was like it was not exactly Breaking Bad. But it's kind of just a lawyer show for most mm-hmm. of it, mm-hmm. but it's just good because it's just a clever scheming. You know, manipulating the system of like how a, how an actual bad guy does, where it's like I can weaponize the law for my own game, which many people do in real life. You mm-hmm. know, it's like oh, I just need to fucking just <laughs> you know, I can you know manipulate and rig things, especially if you're like a your trial lawyer because they have, every lawyer will tell you nobody wants to go to trial because if it comes down to having twelve people's opinions, you're gonna pick twelve idiots, and that's why idiot people get off all the time, and why innocent people go to jail all the fucking time. But yeah. This episode is brought to you by the Innocence Project. Innocence Project, very good one. Actually, support it. I because uh, every day you hear a new story where it's like, "Hey, this guy was just getting milk and he was black near a murder fifty miles away," and they're like, "Well, 
We'll, th- we'll lock him up for 50, 50 years. Yeah. Milk, a likely story. Yeah. Black guys don't like milk. <laughs> Just a new stereotype. <laughs> we all know. No. Have you close your eyes? Think about a black person drinking milk. Does it make sense to you? Yeah, a little bit. Because Michael, Michael Jordan drank milk in the 90s. He was part of the God Milk campaign. Yeah, but that was also, I think, while he had the uh, Hitler mustache. Or was it, that later? Uh, no, because he did Hitler with Haynes. Oh, Hitler. <laughs> yeah. Hitler with Haynes. He did Hitler with Haynes. Yeah, that's what he did. <laughs> he rocked it for years. I think he might be still rock. I don't know. That's a, it's a wild move. But mm-hmm. I do get if you're like, I'm Michael Jordan, if anybody can bring back the Hitler mustache. He really it. tried. So I asked like the same uh, breaking bad question to my parents, and yeah. I loved their respective answers. Okay. So I asked them, at what point did you stop rooting for Walt? And uh, my mom, mm-hmm. full on, goes never <laughs> because I think she just is. You know, you alluded to it. You're like, yeah. well, you got to like the protagonist. Yeah, yeah. She went longer. Literally, nobody else in my life that I've yeah. asked that question to has said uh, the whole time. And I, yeah. I brought up, I'm like. Uh, Because she's like, he's doing it for his family. I'm like, no, because he could have accepted the money. And right away she goes, yeah, he's he's going to accept money from that asshole. Yeah. yeah. That's a very like (laughs) that's a very boomer slash Gen X thing Mm -hmm. of you don't take a handout from somebody. Mm -hmm. And I feel like our generation is like, dude, just take the money and just take the money, dude. Just take the money. (laughs) It's always like the joke of like what Canadian Breaking Bad is. You have cancer Mm -hmm. and it's already paid for Mm -hmm. because we have a functioning healthcare system. My dad's answer. Yeah. Polar opposite. It makes me laugh because uh, I'm like, when did you start? When did you stop rooting for Walt? Yeah. And he goes, I never rooted for him. He's a drug dealer. <laughs> <laughs> that's the boomer answer. I love that answer. <laughs> that's, that's fucking great. Yeah. He's breaking the law. Breaking the law. <laughs> yeah, dude. Meth is bad, though. Meth is bad. Have you ever done meth before? No, I've never done meth. Were you, so, so in high school, your balls to the wall athlete, like yeah. really trying to make this football thing happen. Yeah. Were, what was your relationship to drugs and alcohol? Uh, zero. Really? Yeah, I was not a cool kid, like, at all. Like, okay. I was not invited to parties to hang out. I'd be me and my dork friends watching, like, anime and mm-hmm. superhero movies, reading comic books. Go Like, when we would, like, everybody's like, Mom, we're going to the movies. We actually just went to the movies. Mm-hmm. Like, I was not, like, I did not, I did never had a sip alcohol to the thing. I, like, end of my senior year, like, March-ish, once my wrestling season was done. Oh, wow. Yeah, I did not party and drink and do any like any hard drugs i didn't smoke weed until i was 20 okay yeah yeah so what What was uh and now i do them all yeah now you're a tough now now I'm you're popping a tough guy. Bill, smoking weed drinking drugs <laughs> nah. smoking weed and drinking cigarettes nah yeah so i love drinking cigarettes dude mm-hmm. well i never smoked cigarettes because my mom has been a chain smoker her entire life and that's when i was just like god the amount of times you just wake up in the morning to the <clears throat> you're like Ugh. it's like come on yeah come on guys what are we doing here uh-huh and ironically her lungs are better than my dad's so my dad was a new york city firefighter for 23 years oh geez and that turns out burning buildings are worse than cigarettes yeah he really should have stopped taking his mask off and being like <laughs> <laughs> but you know he, he loves the smoke he loves the smoke damn dude shout out to so you have a firefighter father Okay, that well, that makes sense because you said you were in a like a commuter town, like yeah. a lot of people. You know what's weird is like I'm either I'm even further north than you, but there were so many commuters. Oh, this people, like there are like guys who were coming from like Middletown. And it's shit, like, crazy all the way up there. Like there was I know the people that would go from like Poughkeepsie. Uh huh. Like that's like that's like a two hour fucking trip in the morning and then two hours back. It, like it, it, I, I, I never understood on a Port been. Authority bus where people famously do not behave themselves. I was thinking more just like the train, but yeah. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. It. Or most of them actually, most of them drove. They love driving. Mm-hmm. Everyone America is built on driving. Yeah, which is annoying. It's uh, yeah, it's crazy. I um, okay, so you uh, not a drug and alcohol guy uh, in yeah. high school, and that's yeah. very interesting to me because my. My perception of everyone that was on the football team, I don't yeah. know if you'll believe this, but I wasn't sure. on the football team. Oh, I really? You no. were at the ball? They they <laughs> <laughs> they offered it to me, but it just yeah, uh, you, you you didn't want it. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. I, I, I I chose to get thrown aw- around by big men off the field, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> but uh, well, I'm gonna throw you as part of the podcast. Oh yes, yeah. okay, hell I'm yeah. I'm gonna have a Bobby and Andrew see which one of you guys I can throw from, <laughs> and then you guys combine and see how far you can throw me. Ooh. Okay. That'd be fun. Nice. Be a fun clip. Yeah. Well, yeah. A fun clip of me, Andrew, or possibly both of us throwing our backs out. 
Listen, if you lift with your legs, you should mm-hmm. be fine. Yeah, I don't deadlift. I'm too scared to. Okay. Yeah. You should. It's good for you. No, it's. I, I feel like... You know what happened to me recently? Because I've been no. having things oh, with my... <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you. Yeah. Um, the, my lower back has been bothering me a little bit, but which is like... I think, I think it's just being 33, but I like bent over recently and my upper back was like... Ooh. Like I got a little bit of oop from my upper back. Yeah, I've had a lower back like spasms here and there. Mm-hmm. Those are the fucking worst. I, hate it. I know. Because it's like if your arm, you're like, all right, I guess I won't use this arm for a little while. But your back is is like the central part of your body. It feels yeah. like you're like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna be in it a can, wheelchair. It connects soon. the whole thing. Yeah, like that that is like a genuine fear is being like wheelchair bound. So my perception as as somebody in high school was like everybody in on the football team were like we're partying. Right. Mm-hmm. And you, but you were like a nerd for football. Yeah. I was just a nerd for football. Nerd and fucking everything. Like, I just think it's like I was on the football team and I was mainly into sports, but mm-hmm. all my friends were like theater kids and like, you know, into movies and like all the artistic side. I was like, it's like a clear, like, thing. I was like, I never hung out with like the other quote unquote athletes and jocks and stuff. Do you feel like you were sort of thrown into that world because you became big so quickly? I don't know if I was feeling like I was throwing, like, you know, my parents got the guys started in sports. And I do just like, I'm a pretty competitive person in general. Like I enjoy competition. And then, you know, it's also like, I, I've, I, you know, I was always a fat kid growing up, but it's like, you know, I was never unathletic, you know, I was like, I was heavy and like, I can't, I, here's the thing. I actually had a pretty good, like sprinting speed. I had zero endurance. I couldn't run for a long time, but mm-hmm. if it was just like, straight me running like in a straight line with like 40 yard dash like 90 90 90 feet in baseball or whatever mm-hmm. i could do that pretty well so the point that i was on the i was on the freshman baseball team i couldn't hit for shit i just had no hand-eye coordination or whatever mm-hmm. but i was like pretty i had pretty good wheels so i was like the designated runner sometimes mm-hmm. where it'd be like there's this one kid frankie mealy who was a fat kid and he was he, but he could hit the ball pretty well. So he hit like a single. And my coach would take him out and put me, who was fatter than him at the time, to run for him. And it was awesome. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I yeah. mean, that's the best of both worlds because you can eat whatever you want, but you're still healthy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hell Ooh. yeah. I know. Dude, fucking. What I've learned now, like, of just being an adult, like, how, like, the our entire food systems got poisoned in the 60s, 70s, and 80s mm-hmm. by massive conglomerations to get people addicted to certain foods. Sugar, dude. Sugar. They put sugar in everything, and they purposely suppressed every fucking study that's like, actually, no, you want, like, a nice lean meal mm-hmm. and healthy. Because it's like, oh, well, we got fat everybody. That's why type 2 deep diabetes became a thing in the late 80s. Yeah. It's literally just pumped every kid full of fucking sugar mm-hmm. at a young age, and it gets them addicted to it, so you develop bad eating habits your entire life. Yeah, and it's you know it's interesting if you cut out certain foods, you could eat so much more. Like yeah. you'll be more satiated if you're just eating like uh, like carbs, fruits, vegetables, fats. Yeah. You don't have but like you throw in a regular Pepsi in there and that's fucking what 250 calories something like that. Something like that. It's yeah. like eating three hard boiled eggs. And then the calories aren't that bad. I, I didn't make it seem that fucking Well, here's the thing like, and then, but here's the thing like the calories aren't so bad and like it's like you could have one a day and it's not wouldn't really wouldn't be the worst for you, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, as a larger man in general, like I need about 2000 2200 calories a day, mm-hmm. right? Just to keep my body like functioning. Mm-hmm. Uh so you can spare some things. Problem is, though, is it gives you cravings. It gives you cravings for yeah. more. And so then you say, okay, I have one of those. And then you're like, it goes like two hours. And I'm, like, I'm kind of hungry again. So you nibble on someone else. And then you just keep, and you just keep it up. And then you, to the point your body wants to feel, feel full. Mm-hmm. So then you just stuff your fucking face, mm-hmm. you know. And then uh, you fucking get to 300 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> you're, like, you're like, fuck. And then, uh, you, and then you just, you know, have, then you do everything in your power to try and lose it by 30. Like I'm trying to now. Okay. Yeah. How old are you? I'm 29. Oh, you're 29 and you're, you're trying to lose 30 by 30? Uh, yeah. I'm trying to lose. I'm trying to get under 300 pounds by the time I'm 30 in September. You're over 30, 300 pounds? Oh, yeah. That's, I wouldn't have uh, guessed that. Because I hold it pretty well. Like, yeah. it's, I, I, again, my joke my Sam is I'm like the hottest fat guy to ever exist. <laughs> I, I genuinely believe that too. <laughs> I'm the hottest fat guy to ever exist. Woo. You know, you are a good looking man. Yeah. It's all I could do. Not Here's to the, kiss I you lost right the now. weight once in college. Ooh. Like I got down to pretty like 250 and I was just like in shape 250. Two fi- what's a, do you know the BMI of, of what you are at 250 at 511? Uh, I was probably like in the mid, like low teens at that point. Oh, really? Oh, so yeah. sk- almost like that wasn't well, lean, s- not skinny, skinny. lean. Yeah, like more lean. Like mm-hmm. I was like, I'm trying to get a good comp to it. Um, do you know any pro wrestling? Not really. Okay. Well, people look up AJ. Not AJ Styles is probably too small. Mm-hmm. 
I'd say kind of AJ Styles where he has like a little pooch mm -hmm. or like, oh, Chris Jericho. That's a good comp mm -hmm. for him where like you see this guy and he's not fat, but he's not thin, mm -hmm. you know, prime Chris Jericho, not 50 year old Chris Jericho mm -hmm. for people. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was kind of like that where I was, I was very muscular and very in shape. And then like, I think I lost the weight too fast and that you don't realize that that's the problem is your body then wants to get back to kind of stasis. So like, you know, I lost probably, let's say it was probably like 320 at the time. So I lost 70 pounds in three and a half months. And then I could put it all back over the course of a year. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, you're like, okay, put on a little weight, no big deal. Put on a little weight, no big deal. And then next thing you know, right back to it and actually heavier. And you're like, fuck. And um, I wonder if like, uh, uh, because like growing up, you, you're great at this football thing. Yeah. Right. And you're encouraged to be be bigger. Yeah. You know what I mean? So maybe like that's your starting point. You don't play football anymore, but like that's kind of like how you operate. That's how yeah. you learn how to well, eat no, and exercise. Like, yeah. You start because like when you're at football, like, you know, they want you eating carbs, but you're you're burning so much. You're exercising doing two days in the summer. So it's really not that big of a deal, mm -hmm. especially when you're younger. Because it's like, oh, you just do it and you're eating. And it's literally fine. Like you'll see like, you know, you see a professional offensive lineman. They fall away about about 300 to 320 pounds. Mm -hmm. You look at them and like they're big, but they are in such fucking good shape. You don't even notice it. And the problem all of them face though is once they're done, once they retire, is like you still kind of want to eat like that, but you're naturally not going to work out as much. You're not going to take some time off. And then you start getting the pooch, pooch, pooch. And then a lot of them drop dead in their 50s of heart attacks. Yeah, and that's why there's been a lot of like guys pressure was like they like they've been trying to get like an exit program for it where it's just like look man you need to be on like a certain diet and we'll get you down to a level where you can still be the big guy and be healthy but you're not gonna balloon like jason kelsey of the eagles just retired and he's pretty in shape he's only like 285 i think he's mm -hmm. like smaller so but if he's smart like the biggest guys is there's this uh uh, the center for the cleveland browns he was with them for 10 years when he played he was about 330 and then when he left, he got down to I think two thirty, and he looks like incredible now. Like 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 you'd be like you never think this guy was an offensive lineman. Yeah, you know, handsome dude. Ooh. Yeah, so that's and that's cool. coming from the the most handsome fat guy. That's well, he was not existed. handsome when he was fat. He's handsome when he got skinny. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm hot fat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude. I'm a little jealous because the listeners know I'm a former fat boy. Really? And I just I had a uh, um, yeah, but like perpetually skinny fat. So I'm at five. Oh, that, that's the worst kind of fat. Skinny yeah. fat is really bad. At five six, I was one ninety, which is like oh, thirty that's big. BMI. That's yeah. big. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I had, but it was it wasn't in like like it didn't fill out my shoulders or like my calves. It was like. Uh, big beer belly, like Homer Simpson beer belly, yeah, and then puffy alcoholic face. And that's oh. that's where the being fat was from. Anyway, gotcha, was gotcha. The yeah. Mm -hmm. BMI is not a good indicator though of your actual like. I think for most people it is. No, I I don't I I disagree because like it gets you like this insane way of looking at it. Uh, it's like there's people who are ha like their BMI may be high, but they're not heavy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like the way their body contorts. Every body is literally different. Mm -hmm. So do you remember the old We Fit? No. Do you remember, you remember the Nintendo Wii? Yeah. There was a game called Wii Fit, and they had like a little balance board you'd step on where they would weigh you and be like, because the whole thing is you'd work out on it. You know, uh -huh. you'd do push ups, you do like steady me in place. And it would basically call every American fucking fat. Mm -hmm. It was designed in Japan. Yeah. You know, so like, it'd be like my dad, New York City firefighter, mm -hmm. top of shape, probably about 215 pounds. But you look at the guy, never, there's not a fucking ounce of fat on him at mm -hmm. the time at all. And it's just like, nope, this guy's a big fat piece of yeah. shit. And they would literally have a, a little like me on the stage where it'd be like a little skinny guy. You step on the stage and it goes, boop. I was like, fuck you, Japan. Dude, that's that's such a fucking, yeah. like a difference in culture. I remember I had a, uh, a friend who uh, she, she used to do like ESL. Um, mm -hmm. in college and it was like uh, uh, mostly Asian people yeah and one of the students went uh, you're fat yeah and it wasn't like bullying it was no, just like just you like should know a matter of fact like mm -hmm. they feel like they need to tell you these yeah things. yeah and it's fucking it's 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 such a different culture I've never been to Japan no neither have I I've never been to Asia I've never been to Asia either yeah I've never been to Asia I've been mostly Europe most of the United States and stuff. where'd you go in Europe uh, let's see, I've been to Ireland, Scotland, England, France, mm -hmm. Germany, mm -hmm. uh, Portugal. Uh, that's it. Hell yeah, dude. But yeah, I guess I need to go more Eastern Europe. Mm -hmm. Man, my next. I don't know if you need to. <laughs> <laughs>
I got Italy, Greece. Mm-hmm. Those are ones I want to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, those are like, again, those are like more of you just going to eat and fuck. Yeah. <laughs> you love eating and fucking. I really do. Was that the secret you wanted to tell me? Um, no, I was going to tell you that, uh, you know, before we were friends and I knew you when you had a shaved head a little bit uh-huh. through mics, I didn't like you. Ooh. Yeah, I didn't like it. I think it's, and honest to God, Spicy. in hindsight, I think it's just because you had a shaved head. Ooh, okay. You're like, I don't know what this guy's <laughs> political I mean, beliefs are. No, I don't are. think it's political beliefs. I think I just I just don't like the way his head looks. Huh. I will make snap judgments about people sometimes, and I'm like, I'll commit to those forever. Whoa. Yeah. So it's it's the randomness of life, folks, because, Sean, you and I are friends now. But yeah. I did start growing my hair out a few months ago. Yeah. This could have not this could have not happened. Yeah, honestly, it might not have. I mean, I'm sure I would have come around, you huh. know, get, once I get to know a person, but I would see, I think I saw you like Eastville once and I was mm-hmm. like, I'm out on this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do that sometimes. God, I, I can be such a judgmental prick at com- during comedy sometimes where like be like one or two things. I'm like, I'm nope, I'm done. And I, and I don't even get to know the person. Like I'll say something on stage or just like the kind of way they hold themselves. And I always forget that they're human beings <laughs> and everybody's like, uh, has their own little nicks and, you know, crannies to them mm-hmm. and stuff. It's like there's a comic, I'll say it, yeah. There's a comic that a lot of people like didn't like. I don't, I, you know, most people I don't find him funny or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then he cried on stage because he was going through some real things, like a re- like real life. You know, like there's some like I don't know family problems or something. He was kind of being open and honest about. It. I was like, ah, oh, fuck, that's right. He's a human being with hopes and dreams. <laughs> fuck, ah, oh, I feel like such a dick because I like didn't. I was like, oh, don't cry, be a man. <laughs> but I was like, oh no, that's right. He may be annoying, but he's a he's a good person. You know what's interesting is that 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 moment of him crying on stage gave you empathy. Whereas if I saw someone crying on stage, if I saw a man crying on stage, all yeah. right, I'm a little toxically masculine in this oh, respect. I, I'm fucking severe, don't cry. Dude. I'm severely cry toxic. alone in your room, dude. Yeah, dude, dude don't, don't even cry. Just drink a fucking fifth <laughs> of this whiskey and then stand in front of the bridge. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you handle your fucking trauma. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sean Barry, the therapist. Yeah. Have you tried standing in front of the bridge? Yeah. And then someone. But you don't. But you, don't you just stand there. You just stand in front of the bridge. There. It's not. It's not necessarily going to. Uh, here's off the top. I. I really. Th- I. Uh, this is the thing. I've been. I think like therapy is getting really overrated right now because mm-hmm. I think it's become so culturally accepted that I think there's a lot of hack therapy going around. <sighs> yeah. And that people are abusing like the actual like terminology and workmanship mm-hmm. for their own selfish gain, as opposed to actually people who use go to therapy to. You know, better themselves or just bent or like w- whatever would have mm. you. But there's some people who are like, oh, I'm in therapy. And like, as if that's like a, a, like a golden ticket to do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. And it's also like, well, I've been in therapy for 10 years. I'm like, are you sure it's working? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, I know a lot of people have some, like, but there's some people who just like, I was like, what are you in fucking therapy mm-hmm. for? You, just, you get down the dumps. Like, yeah, life just kind of sucks sometimes. I've always been a proponent of men will literally go to therapy instead of just admitting that life kind of stinks. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Like, I, th- I think this is what the Irish comes from mm-hmm. i think it's like a really irish attitude it's like yeah sometimes life sucks and you kind of just gotta deal with it you know dude but- i had a i had fucking um uh a comic uh one time we were just like talking or whatever and i forget how it came up we were, oh we were talking about like uh how we swipe on dating apps yeah and i think i said like well obviously if she's too attractive i'm gonna swipe left yeah and uh, he goes, have you considered going to therapy? I'm like, <laughs> fuck off, dude. What the fuck? Like, no, like I have a. It's a good joke, though. I and Was he saying it jokingly or? No, he was. Oh, no, then it's blame. <laughs> you know, the thing, too, is like he was a handsome guy. I'm like, uh, no, I just have an understanding. Is of he the handsome market. like how I'm handsome or like? He's handsome like a non-delusional person is handsome. <laughs> 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 that's fair no he was it was it was to because to me i'm like i didn't say i'm fucking ugly and i'm hideous and i'm not deserving of love i'm just like this woman's a 10 and i am not a 10 yeah that's not low self-esteem that's fucking accurate self-esteem yeah no it's like like it's it's fine to, like why can't people just accept their position in life yeah like it sucks like you're a great guy you're mm-hmm. nice but the average woman is not going to want a five six redhead Okay, you didn't have to say average. I said not a 10. Dude, and like, you were like, and, dude, and the man, six through nines are not interested dude, either. The, the, the two to two to nines are, don't even want any of them. You got to get that. The two to nines? Yeah, you get ones and tens. You can't get two to nines. Uh, ones, oh. that, ooh, that's a great question to mm-hmm. ask like a man. Would you want the, women, the person you're trying to only be able to be a one or a 10? Oof. But like, it's not guaranteed they'll date you, but those are the only people who are attracted to you. Yikes. But Ten, tens are going to cheat on you. Ten might cheat on you. The also, ones will just, be great. Well, here's the thing. I, I think also people are like like people are very shallow and like mm-hmm. I think people won't. So I'm rewatching New Girl right now. 
it's a, it's a fun little sitcom. I enjoy it. It's, it's basically friends for, you know, our generation or whatever. And there's a really good plot. It's the character Schmidt used to be a big fat guy. Okay. And they're going to like, he's dating his ex. Who's also, a, who's actually a big woman. He's now like thin and ripped and shit. Mm-hmm. And basically like a lot of episodes is like, he just doesn't want to be seen in public with her. Despite the fact he loves everything about her because it's just like a status thing for people. Yeah. And I think that's a lot of the cases for 90. I think it's for like 95% of people dating wise where it's like, they might find you or me attractive and they would even fuck us and they'll hang out with us, but they would never want to be seen doing these things with us. You know, you know what I mean? It's like, it's one of those where it's like, they are more ashamed of the idea of like being with this person. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and in that case, if that's how you feel, then unironically therapy might be helpful. Are you a therapy guy? No. I, th- did I just talk about? <laughs> oh yeah. No, I've, I've done a couple of therapy sessions here and there. It's mm-hmm. like telehealth and stuff, but like, I, I, I'm not like, don't go every week and like just talk about your fucking week. Like if you have something really bothering you and like you're really feeling depressed and you need to work it out, yeah, of course go to therapy. Work mm-hmm. work your thing out. But like it's the people are just like huh, work is really t- hard right now. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that, that just it sucks. Welcome to this crushing soul of capitalism. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why you find your own outlets and stuff. You need to find like things to live for. You don't live to work, you work to live. Mm-hmm. What do you live to what do you live for? What I live for, I don't know. I, I'm kind of just like I, I kind of in my head like I kind of, I'd say in my 20s came was I don't want to like I've never been like a guy like this is my career and I'm gonna do that. I like I kind of just want to live an adventurous life because it's so fucking short, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's how you look at it. It's like you really only get 30 years to really capitalize, more or less 20 to 50. And I know people go, oh, you can do it, but like your body starts to ache and get harder, and like you know things get more expensive and like. There's bills, and if you have kids, you have to be like really have to be there for them. Mm-hmm. So like me, it's like I want to travel the world. I want to drink good food. I want I want to drink good food. I want to eat good food. I want to drink good drinks. I want to have sex with good women. You know, like things like that. I like making people laugh. I like I literally just enjoy just hanging out and having laughs with people. Like I was like I think I feel like that's all what life's about because I don't believe in an afterlife or any religious. I kind of think this is just kind of it. We're we're just animals, and then we die, <laughs> and then that's kind of it. So I'm like, I kind of just think we should just live to live, you know, like and try to make the best of life. Mm-hmm. It's kind of my more or less philosophy at this point. Yeah, I think that's a good philosophy. I, yeah. I've been thinking about that too. I mean, I'm very, um, I think I'm driven, yeah, in a way that is probably off putting to some people, mm-hmm. but um, um, I think, I think it's. I think I'm at a point in my career now where it's like now or never. And mm-hmm. I've been treating it like that for like the last year. Mm-hmm. Whereas when I first started doing comedy. How was, long have you been doing stand up for? I started in, in 2016. 2016. So that's eight years stuff? Yeah. Okay. Shave off a few months for COVID, I suppose. Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Sure, sure. But like, yeah, I mean, like, that's the thing is, it's, every since it takes 10 years, right? Mm-hmm. And so I started legitimately in 2018 now. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, I've done it, I did a times before that but i was like i'm going to pursue this in 2018 mm-hmm. i got to the best of my ability so yeah i'm on year six mm-hmm. and uh it's not it's it's hard this is a hard <laughs> dumb career path yeah it is i feel like though there's a sacrifice in whatever you do yeah. you know so like i'm certainly making uh sacrifices to do stand up but it's like worth it to me mm-hmm. it's um get ready folks this is going to be cringe, but Frederick Nietzsche once said, <laughs> "Yeah, you're right. I'm cringing already." He who has a, a why can bear almost any how. Okay. And I'm like, yeah, dude, like even like living with roommate. If I did not do stand up, I would not have roommates. Could you afford it? Yeah, because I would. I would be able to. Oh, you'd have like a real job. Well, not since I quit my job in June, but uh, <laughs> before that, I yeah, yeah 100% could afford my own yeah. place in, in New York. But In New York, that's really impressive. Yeah. I used to make good money uh, doing a job in sales that was as lucrative as it was soul crushing. I believe that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's the problem is you meet all these people who have like the money to live in mm-hmm. New York. And their job sucks so much, and mm-hmm. they're just like, like they're like in, enslaved to it, basically. Where it's mm-hmm. like, it was like, who gives a fuck? And they they get their, they, they, most of their souls just kind of break. You see it in their eyes. Like, and I've been to like parties. And I met guy like Wall Street and finance bros and stuff. And sometimes like, I mean, there's there's the bad guys who are just like, yeah, dude, I'm crushing money to crush puss. <laughs> yeah, but then yeah. there's ones like, yeah, and they're like, they're like, I was like, you know, you can just leave this, right? You have the money to get out. Mm-hmm. It's like, what you have? Like, do you have like two hundred thousand dollars in the bank? You can make that work for a long fucking time. Yeah. I mean, I've made basically like $40,000 work for 
years now mm-hmm. <laughs> after like a couple of real jobs I worked and I was like I mean, that's kind of just stretching and thinning obviously bring in more but not as much as a, as a steady gig would yeah to pursue comedy which is silly you mm-hmm. know <laughs> <laughs> yeah it is silly but also having a regular job and a, a, a wife and a kid when you don't want those things is also silly it's yeah. arguably more silly no, yeah. I always wonder about um like guys who are like uh <laughs> Got to go home to the wife. Sometimes they're joking, but sometimes they made a life decision they shouldn't have. Oh, yeah. Well, I think it's just like there's so many people who are like, what are you told? It's like, all right, you go to school, you get a degree, you go to college, you get another degree, you meet a nice lady, you you settle down, Mm -hmm. you pop out a couple kids, and then you die. Yeah. Like there's some people who are just like lives like, and then you go to heaven like that. They're like, like for like, if you're like deep south, I think. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people are just like, I just, I followed the path I was told to do. And then I realized on the path, I was like, I don't like this at all. And then mm-hmm. you see those are the guys who cheat. Uh, those are the guys who like you'll find like are have get the develop like gambling addictions. It's because it's never just like I like doing this thing. You know, I mean, I'm sure there's some people like, oh, that's funny. but like a lot of people like the act of like truly cheating in your head is just like I want I'm not happy and I'm lashing out, you know, mm-hmm. like and I, I just need some outlet to then bring me some joy because I feel trapped in this life. Yeah, yeah. Some people are just afraid of like divorce. <laughs> yeah. Which I, this is fair. I mean, I get, I, I, my parents are happily married, but also because my parents were like very against the grain. Like they, my mom was considered an old spinster when she got married at the ripe old age of 28. In oh, the 80s. Ugh. I know. Ugh, Jesus. <laughs> and they didn't have kids until they were 35, mm-hmm. which again, was like, why would you do that? Yeah. And you know what they did in that time? They traveled, they went to, you know, around the world, they made money, they saved up, they bought a home, mm-hmm. you know, like they built up equity and they lived a good, and they, then they were able to live a good life until they had three kids that ruined it. <laughs> but, you know, and then some people are just like, you know, it's like when you're like 22 and you're having a kid, it's like, dude, you're still a fucking kid yourself. Yeah. You know, so you don't realize how young that is until you're a little bit older than it. Because you're always like, I'm an adult now. I'm an adult now. And you realize no one's ever actually really an adult. Mm hmm. I don't know. Yeah, we're all faking it till we make it. Pretty much. So I'm curious, and this might be kind of an, an intense um, question, but I thought of it while you were describing your life philosophy of ha- just having a nice time. Yeah. So because you you were Division three, yeah. and then at some point you realized it wasn't going to work out for you. Yeah. No more football. Yeah. What was that like? Uh, it was a hard decision to make. It was one of those, like, I, it, I, I remember when the genesis of it started when I was thinking, because I was like, I wasn't starting in college, right? I was a backup. It's, you know, it's, just, it's usually how it works. And I started my, all my high school career, so that was a different experience for me. And I wasn't making, like, a lot of friends on the football team itself. Was, like, nobody I was, like, we weren't enemies, but just, like, vibes-wise, we were just kind of different people. You know, like I said, like, I mainly, you know, I talk about movies and TV, and, like, all these other guys are more just, like, kind of bros, you know? Which I'm, like, I'd love to bro out here and there, but, like, really being, like, tight friends with the, so I wasn't connecting there and a lot of my friends in college were more of like what I like you know nerds basically and then so I remember I was I was late to a practice of spring ball practice and it wasn't my fault they changed the location like there was two gyms and we we had like 98 percent of them in the one and then nobody ever cc'd me on the email to tell me it's the new one so I was five minutes late and I had to stay late and run you know it's the punch my favorite but you're late you run an extra laps and it's like I wasn't mad so there's the but I was just like Hey, like, it's not like I knew and you guys literally did not tell me and I can prove it. And I, again, I was like five minutes late and I got right into practice or whatever. So I was, I was like, why the fuck am I doing this? Mm-hmm. And then it was just like little things where I'm staying in on like a Saturday night to go get up at 6 a.m. the next day for a thing I don't care about. Mm-hmm. To play D3 ball where I'm like, I'm not going pro. I took a hit to my knee. I was fine. It's one of those you just like, <sighs> If I like if I twisted the wrong way, that's an ACL. I don't want to do, wear a fucking brace for a year. Mm-hmm. And it's just like little things like that. I still love football and I still love the sport, but I'm just like, why am I killing myself over this? Yeah. You know? And then I like over the summer, I was like, I'm not having fun. I might as well. I have fun hanging out with my friends and stuff. I might as well. I got two years left to, of uh, college. I might as well explore some other options. So, yeah, we stopped playing after my sophomore year. Mm-hmm. And then I was just like, ah, let me. And then I didn't, I tried going to clubs and stuff. Like I tried joining the comedy club. I've always loved comedy. Mm-hmm. You know, I was like, I was always like watching just comedy central my whole life. And I went there and I'm like, uh, actually I tried joining the stand up club first and I auditioned for him. And it was like my, this is like the third set I ever did. And I was really proud of that. I thought it was pretty good. I wrote, I, it's, it's like my old writer, I would write every word, word for word. Like instead of like having a, and it was a bit on just like how billionaires don't spend their money well. 
Okay. It was it's a in front it's probably hacky now, but mm -hmm. I remember I really liked it. I thought it was good. It was like a solid five minutes. And I you know I got laughs, and then I didn't get it. I got rejected from the stand up club. And I found out who they did pick, and it was like all the guys picked like the three women that were there. And I'm like, oh, oh it's because you guys want to just fuck the girls. Yeah. I, I I get. It. And then I went to the comedy club. And I'm like, this isn't for me either. So mm -hmm. I kind of kept in my back pocket for a little bit while also just watching and listening to podcasts and uh, you know stand up and stuff. You mentioned Comedy Central. I because uh, we're basically the same age. I you're much older, but yeah, I'm much older. <laughs> oh my god, four years. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I don't put my age profile that high on dating apps. <laughs> <laughs> I like them young, dude. <laughs> Imagine if that's how we ended. <laughs> I, just, I just like them young. <laughs> Cut to black. Um, but yeah, I remember watching Premium Blend as a little boy, oh, yeah. and there were a lot of black comics. Yeah. Like, I remember like watching Cat Williams talk about getting his dick sucked while I'm like 12. So good. Yeah. God, I remember I, for the first time I ever heard was this comic, Stephen Lynch. Mm -hmm. And he had, I don't know if it was an album. There was another kid. I was took a bus with him. He's like, dude, you gotta listen to this. Mm -hmm. And he played the song talking about uh, herpes. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is the funniest thing I've heard in my entire life. Just mm -hmm. like, like people in the audience were like, it was crowd work too. So people were just screaming out like, uh, like cures for genital herpes. And it was so fucking funny. I'm yeah. like, this is everything, you know? <laughs> 100% do. I love Stephen Lynch, special ed. Special ed, back, yeah. w back when comedy was irreverent. Yeah, back when... I, I don't know, like, yeah, those like just truly just like oh shock jock. And you're like, you kind of get why people didn't like comedy back then. Yeah, <laughs> you know, because now it's so, it's so prevalent. You know, it's like it's a huge, it's the biggest the industry's ever been. I think. Mm -hmm. I don't even think I know it. Right. It's just mainly because of podcasting. Mm -hmm. You know, because every 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 comic started the podcast in like 2006, mm -hmm. and then they just kept doing it until podcasting became a thing in 2017, and they all got millions of dollars for it. Yeah, and well, I'm following the same formula. Yeah, starting late, and but, but podcasts are oversaturated, and no one's listening. Yeah, dude. Well, I have the 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 loyal sheheads are definitely tuning in, and they're begging to know. Sean, do you have a morning routine? Uh morning routine: wake up, take a piss, take a night, like a long, strong stream piss. Uh, I usually then scroll through my phone for a little bit. I'm trying to change that habit a tiny bit, but uh, you know, I've been lately. Me and my girlfriend have been going to the gym in the morning, which has been good. So I'll wake up, piss, I'll fucking be like, oh, please tell me she's going to cancel. Please tell me she's going to cancel. And then she doesn't. I'm like, fuck. So then I suit up, walk over to the gym, work out for an hour and a half, come home and get like, the rest of my day started. An hour and a half is a good workout. Oh, man. yeah, it's good. I run for about 40 minutes and lift for another 40. And then yeah. 40 minutes of running. Yeah. Oh, 40 minutes. I can run. Like I'll just lock into the arc trainer and then it's just 40 minutes straight. I hate cardio so much. I don't, I don't, I don't, I like cardio in a gym setting. I mm -hmm. can't like run a track. Yeah. Track, you know, okay. I used to, God, I, it's one of those like hindsight. I, th I always look back at old photos. I'm just like, I thought I was fat then. Mm -hmm. but I wasn't. <laughs> I just thought I just, everyone could be, I was fatter compared to everybody else. Mm -hmm. And now it's just like, God, I was, I look, I was fine. If I just maintained that. I'd be the best looking guy. <laughs> If, uh, from my, he's like, they're all getting fat now. Everybody yeah. else is getting fat. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I just need to, I, I just held on strong. Mm -hmm. But no. Yeah. Well, I have faith in you losing the 30 by 30. I think that's going to, yeah, that's kind of the goal. goal. So once we get there, mm -hmm. And then uh, I'm going to have sex with you for my 30th birthday because you're like, Ooh, fuck, he's so hot. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah, man. I want you to call me right after it happens. Oh, yeah. No, I'm going to, I might, I'm like, here's the thing. I do, uh, there's this, I know a guy who's losing weight right now and he does like a daily report on it i'm like dude shut up keep yeah. this to yourself a tiny bit but then he like he like got over like the 35 pound mark i'm like oh fuck maybe i should have done that yeah <laughs> just, just keeping myself accountable mm -hmm. but he also still looks bad so i don't care mm -hmm. <laughs> so are you a morning person yeah it's one of those things like I'm, I'm once i'm up i'm up like i don't need coffee or anything to wake me up i'm just like all right, i'm ready to fucking go i'd say i'm an afternoon person okay. i'm like like what time of day i enjoy Give me a nice 3 p.m. Yeah. Ooh, I think that's like a first. Yeah, it might be like a controversial thing. It's like, I feel like that's usually when I'm getting my most work done and okay. stuff. And then, because then I'm like ready to roll out to do whatever. Uh -huh. you know? Yeah, it, it, it was interesting because there's morning people and there's night people. And I, I believe that the commonality on this podcast when I ask this question is people say that they get a little bit sad midday. Mm. And I, I relate to that a lot. Yeah, because okay. I'm productive in the morning, and then there's stand up at night, and then there's this kind of like limbo, where I'm like, oh, now I'm sitting here with my thoughts, God forbid, 
You know what I mean? See, in the afternoon, those when I'm mainly doing whatever work I have. Okay. So if it's photo editing or video or something, that's like what I'm doing. So my morning is usually committed to <laughs> going to the gym. Every now and then, I'll just play a video game for a couple hours and just listen to a podcast. So I'm like, that's kind of a nice little routine. And then, uh, yeah, then I'll, in the afternoon, I'll throw on another podcast, somebody else, and, and work, 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 work. And then I head out and do whatever mics or shows or jobs I have. <sighs> Work, work, work. You're a big yeah. Beyonce fan, if I understand correctly. I'm a fan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I like Beyonce. Now you have two siblings. I do. Are they Beyonce fans? Uh, I don't know. I what don't, a terrible segue. What a terrible, <laughs> terrible. I don't, I don't think I remember telling you I have two siblings. Uh, so, earlier. Oh, did I say that? Right? Oh, mm -hmm. it's a good listener. I am a, I'm an active listener, dude. Yeah, no, I have two brothers, uh, one older, one younger. I don't think either of them are particularly big Beyonce fans. Okay. Yeah. What's it like being a middle child? Uh, it's kind of like every stereotype put into the truth. You know, she's like my older brother is a troublemaker and my younger brother's a baby back bitch. <laughs> and, and so a lot of times you're like, everyone's kind of like, like you're the, like you're like the middleman, you know, you're like the glue guy for uh, like every situation. So if it's like me and my two brothers spending time together, it's like, they'll both, they'll fight all the fucking time. And they just like both come to me. And then same thing was like, if my parents are mad at one of my brothers, they come to me and my brothers, you know, Dude, I'm fascinated. And then by it turns out I hate all of them, actually. Yeah. So it's like, you know. Well, I mean, I'm the Chris Bosch of the family, you know? I don't get you. Oh, God, you don't know sports? No, I don't. I'm the sorry. big three Miami Heat, uh, Dwayne Wade, LeBron James, Chris Dude, Bosch. Dude, I had to ask you what D3 is. You did, you did have that. I forgot. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, is that the best one or the third yeah, best one? Yeah, Chris Bosch. Yeah, I, yeah, God. I, I wish comedian more comedian. It, I was shocked when I got really into the stand up world how many comics know nothing about sports. Mm -hmm. I was like, I thought we were all just like, kind of sports bros who are trying to make each other laugh. And Dixon's like, no, they're like, uh, they're like, uh, do you know who Mitch Hedberg is? Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> dude, the guy's been dead 20 years. Get over <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. Start watching football. Stop watching Mitch Hedberg. But that's kind of what's like fun about comedy sometimes is yeah. like you get a group of people in the room that have like, they wouldn't be hanging out otherwise. Yeah. And that usually sucks if you're in an office setting. Yeah. Cause there's HR and shit, but like we're used to watching each other for the most part. Like, uh, speak our truth, you know. So you're like, okay, I know what this person's like, and they're totally fucking different from me. But we're trying the same yeah. thing. There's also people that they're very different who they are on stage, who they are off the stage. Like I'd say, I'm much more mellow off stage than I am on stage okay. or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, no, that's why I like about like in theory, if you're a comic, I don't care who you are, you can just hang with whomever, and you're just like you know when you're saying fucked up shit to each other, there's no malintent. It's just mm -hmm. to make the other person laugh. Yeah. Which is like, I always go crazy when people get like mad at comics on a podcast yeah. and they go viral for whatever reason. It's like, like, no, they don't believe anything they're just saying. They're just saying outrageous things to get a reaction because you can't just do like a dad joke and get a laugh. Yeah. You know? I don't know. I always think that that's like fucking crazy. Yeah. You know, it's like. We're just being silly geese, you guys. Pretty much. Yeah. A bunch of silly geese. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So you have a girlfriend, and but you don't live together. No, we don't. We've, um, we've only been together. We've been seeing each other about seven months. We've been together together about four months. Nice. Yeah. Hell yeah. Congrats. Yeah. Just texting me. And uh, so, oh, but interesting. You guys both work out every morning? Yeah. Or? Well, we both live in this. Like, she lives two blocks from me, which is a nice little coincidence. So Yeah. Like, literally, we, like, yeah, we walk to the gym together. Our gym's, you know, over by the train station where you saw. Mm -hmm. Rock gym. Oh, a rock gym. Yeah. Is it a rock climbing gym? No. I thought I thought it was when I initially signed up. I was like, oh, rock. I was like, nope. That had to be intentional. Like, oh, let's get people in through the door. A hundred percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, God, it's such a, it's a good gym, but also a terrible gym. You know, and maybe it's, just, it's like, I, I had my gym growing up and it was just like, it was a perfect like setup where like the meatheads were kind of segue, segue off and then the rest was just kind of like a chick gym, which is a lot of ellipticals and stuff. Mm -hmm. And this one is just kind of a mix of both and no one's happy. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But it's all right. Oh, after we hung out that one day, we went to, or I went to rather, the um, Planet Fitness in Astoria. Oh, yeah. How was that? Uh, probably the most crowded gym I've ever been I'm, to in I'm, my life. Really? Yeah. Well, and also it's because it's three stories. That's annoying. Yeah. Because you got to think about like, okay, what exercises are on this floor? Yeah. Or do I want, man, you know, I guess I get some extra exercise walking up and down these stairs. You know? See, I like Planet Fitness is good because it's cheap, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I was just Planet Fitness members for a little bit. 
And it's one of those, I'm like, you just, because it's so cheap, it's, it's so overcrowded. Mm -hmm. And there's always a bunch of Latino kids lifting in jeans. Mm -hmm. And you're just like, come on. Yeah. Well, you're trying to like, you know, like I'm, again, I'm not a, the expert expert of working out, but I'm like, I know what I'm doing mm -hmm. in there. And I'm like, you're like, God. So that's why I I'm, I will pay a little bit more to get a little more exclusivity at the gym. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I'm, uh, one day I hope to get an Equinox membership so I could get blown in the bathroom. Oh, dude, that's the fucking dream. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. <laughs> My, they just, they have a, they installed a sauna and they made an open face sauna in my gym because I'm like, yeah, so nobody can hide getting a load, <laughs> getting, getting a load. Dude, yeah. You know, I always do think like 1977 gay mm -hmm. in New York City must have been awesome. Oh, yeah. Dude, because you get the, like the part where you're, everyone's like secretly hiding it a little mm -hmm. bit, but also it's just fuck fest. Like, just, just pre HIV. Just like no one knows what it is. No one's getting it yet. Mm -hmm. And you're just having fun. And they're like, oh, honey, I'm going to the Fire Island for a little bit. And then you and the boys just, <laughs> Fucking go to town. Go to town. Right? That sounds awesome. Nice. You know, from what, again, I, I am like a, I joke, but I, I, you know, I'm a pretty big supporter of the LGBT. I have a lot of, you know, gay friends. And uh, just like every time they tell me, it's like, man, dude, the gay part, gay guy party sound awesome. Mm -hmm. And every lesbian party sounds awful. <laughs> <laughs> and it sucks that that's the stereotype, but it really is. Yeah. And it's just like a hint of truth mm -hmm. to it. You know, it's like every, it's like, yeah, we're just hooking up. We're going out. We're getting drinks and cocktails. And lesbian ones are just like, well, we were going to help out at a dog killing shelter this weekend. <laughs> you're like, that sucks. So, Sean, if people want to message you inviting you to a gay party, how can they do so? Uh, you can message me on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube at Sean Barry Comic across all social media platforms. I have a sub stack, also Sean Barry Comic. I put out a weekly blog on something that's usually riddled with spelling errors. <laughs> I posted one a couple of weeks ago. And it's one of those, I wrote it like late at night, so I really didn't bother like spell check. And I, there was like one that was just like, as if like a person with, with you know development disabled rodents <laughs> and i got roasted when i put it on reddit i was just like ah this hurts my feelings now because <laughs> i didn't bother to re-edit them i was like fuck it i'm not gonna people people got the point of it mm -hmm. but yeah you can follow me on substack um what I got? bobby and i will be talking all the time soon on our new podcast called red white and jew which is a title we didn't come up with i realized andrew just said it and then i tried changing he's like no no it's that's what it's called it's it's aka riffs and stories riffs and stories is a better name i'll say it so guys f follow sean on all social media platforms uh platforms find his sub stack maybe message him if anything is misspelled um, no don't do that don't, please don't do that and keep an uh, eye out for a new podcast called red white and jew yeah, and then message Andrew at Andrew Stein on all things saying, hey, change the podcast name to uh, Riffs and Stories. It's better. I love Red, White, and Jew, folks. But regardless of what you want the uh, podcast to be called, I really appreciate you tuning into this podcast. Sean's a good man. And remember, folks, early to bed, early to rise, makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. <laughs> so lame. I'm just playing night owls. You know I love you. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>